show you some intranet design tips that you might want to consider when building your next intranet. So one of the first things that I'd like to show is the hero web part and presenting nice information at the top of the page. So what you want at the top of the page is for your most successful intranet content to be readily available for your users of the intranet. And you want this to remain at least semi-static. So as we can see here on the demo, we have a hero web part of which within the hero web part, you can see some of the key highlights at working for the industry or for the, for the company, sorry. So what we can see is some clickable links of which when we go to one of these tiles, they're then directed either to another SharePoint page or to a third party tool that provides them the information that they need to know. Secondly, when considering different content across the internet design, you really want to be using or utilizing section backgrounds. So SharePoint out of the box provides the ability to use brand imagery and brand colors, for example, using a hex code from your brand guidelines. What you would like to do or what you may want to do is to use some more um, background sections um, to further enhance the look and feel of the SharePoint internet so that it reflects your brand guidelines a bit better and a bit clearer. So you can see here the main intranet page is of a purple color but we're starting to bring through some more colors a, a lime green a yellow and even a lilac purple color behind a third design tip is thinking about utilizing a right hand column so you can see on the right hand side here we have some key information that people may find useful near the top of the internet screen however these bits of information here aren't so critical as the stuff that's in the main body but you can see some really handy web parts our time zones weather and even an internet go live countdown timer to excite the champions so that when they are creating the content for the internet they know when the internet is going to be launched a third tip that you might want to utilize when building your internet is a full width column we can see here from my screen share we have a full width column that's utilizing the hero web part which we showed you within a previous tip now this expands and creates a far greater and more impactful landing for the user of the internet the only disadvantage is that it takes up more vertical space, therefore the user may have to scroll, but you may want to utilize these if you feel that you want to create a, a bigger impact or have people have the top links um, more accessible and larger for them to click. Fourth tip for building an internet could be to experiment with some third party tools. So what we like to do is stay within the, the guardrails of SharePoint and Microsoft when building internet. However, SharePoint does have the ability to embed third party code using an iframe um, of which we can start to bring in third party information using the embed web part. So what you can do is you, you can utilize something like a stock web part or you could utilize a LinkedIn web part on the right hand side that you can see here. This allows you to further create web parts or virtual web parts that people wouldn't normally necessarily be able to access using the out of the box web parts from SharePoint. The sixth tip that I would recommend for a SharePoint internet would be to think about how you use the header. So you can see here for this particular wireframe that we have, we have the neutral color appearing in the header here. Now, if we go into the site information just here, you can see if we go to change the look, go to header, by using an extended layout here, you can customize the theme color, but also a background image of which you could specify a white circle like this, for example, or a white square that provides you a third color of being a white background. But this could be of any background color of your choice. You can then on top of that apply a logo if you'd like. Once you've done that, you can then press apply and then your logo will appear either left centrally or right aligned in your internet with a white background. Now, a lot of people disregard the footer and um, it's a very, very useful tool for people to be able to access and it's it serves a similar purpose to the navigation at the top, albeit maybe slightly less used because of its natural position on the page. But if you need to squeeze in some more links onto your internet page, this might be a good place for you to put them. Design tip number seven would be to consider utilizing some web part layouts that you may not commonly associate with. For example, you can see here we have a Contoso News web part of which we have the carousel style. Now, this carousel style doesn't tend to be used for news. We tend to use side by side or top story, uh, maybe even list. But you can see here that this presents a nice carousel appearance for news. So my tip for you would be experiment with different layouts for web parts and make sure that you definitely fit uh, the right layout for your intranet and just experiment with whatever layouts that you can. Tip number eight would be to provide 
a chatbot or a Copilot Studio agent to be able to assist your users within your internet when they are going about and navigating and searching for content. You can see here we have a chatbot open on the top right hand side utilizing that right hand column of which we can ask questions and get responses using AI driven analytics. Another tip I have for when you're considering building an intranet would be to consider using third party calendars if you already have third party systems of which you have items or dates within them. You can see here that we've managed to embed a monday.com calendar within the intranet, again using iframe. Using the embed module web part within SharePoint, we can bring in third party tools and applications um, and be able to show these tools within the intranet embedded onto the page so that people don't have to navigate to them. Another design tip I have is to make sure that you utilize the global navigation within your intranet. Now to do this, all you need to do is register your intranet site as a hub and doing so, you will have this global navigation appear at the top. Any intranet sites that you associate to the hub will also inherit this global navigation, meaning as the name implies, the navigation is visible globally across all intranet sites associated to that hub, which means that if you need to have a constant and all appearing navigation link or navigation bar across all internet sites, you can utilize this as opposed to just utilizing the site level navigation. Another design tip I have for you is not necessarily a design tip, but it's more of a functionality tip. You may consider wanting to put your intranet within Teams, therefore your users of the intranet and also within your organization can access the intranet easily without having to go to their browser. They can access all company-wide global policies and information and documents within Teams itself by using the Viva Connections application. You can see that I can access my chat, my Teams, my activity, but also the hub within this little button here. If I press this, you can see that the intranet appears on the page, just like how I'm sharing with you right now. So another functionality tip would be to consider putting this within Teams. Another tip I have for you is not necessarily a design tip, but it's more of a functionality tip again. So out of the box, you get analytics with SharePoint. Now these are great. However, they are rather basic in that when you go on this analytics tab, providing that you're a site owner, you'll be able to see your page viewers, your page views, the average time spent per user, and also page traffic by time listed on this map here. Okay. Now these are great. However, if you want to know how you can best suit your intranet for your users, you may want some more advanced analytics that show you heat maps, session recordings, and give you some sentiment analysis. To do that, what we can do is we can hook it into Microsoft Clarity. Now, the Clarity dashboard that we can see here, if you toggle the recordings tab just here, you can essentially go and visit your recordings by a specified time range, okay? And within that, when you click on each one of these recordings, you can see the recording itself and how people are interacting with your content on your internet page. OK, as you can see on the screen, there we go. Now, the heat maps within Clarity are great. However, they can struggle to track the, um, the clicks across the whole page, which is where we might use something like the Microsoft Clarity Edge extension of which you can view the heat map within Microsoft Edge. This is another great way to be able to show the heat maps within the intranet. If I just click on Microsoft Clarity Live, you can see here when this loads up, I can toggle this on and I can select heat maps just here. And whilst this internet site, because it's a demo site, hasn't got any heat maps, you'll soon start to appear. Um, soon you'll see little spots of heat maps, which are where people most commonly click. And you can use those to understand which links are the most commonly used within your internet. One of the last tips I have for you is to utilize the site branding feature that's relatively new within SharePoint. So as a site owner, if you go to the settings cog in the top right hand side, if you go to site branding just here, what you can do is you can create a theme using your organization's colors of which you can apply a custom theme to your SharePoint site. So once you click on the brand center, once it loads up, you can select the new theme button of which when you get your hex code or your RGB code from your organization, you'll be able to import it straight into this tool and then it can then build a theme for you that will be automatically applied to your SharePoint site. Now, one thing to note is that this theme that you create here will be only available on a site per site basis. What you can do here is you can choose your primary color, text color, background color, and whether or not you like it to be a dark theme, you can talk about on or off. What we can do is we can add a primary color. The system default here is a slight green. If I press add new color there, I can either add a hex code or an RGB. When I press save, what will happen is you'll see the colors here react live to that new theme. So if I just choose, for example, bright red, click save, 
we see these colors start to appear within all of these buttons. Okay, once you've then selected an accent color, you can press next and call it your theme. And then once you've then created your theme, you can then use that within the SharePoint site. If you want a global theme, so the one that can be selected across multiple different types of sites within SharePoint, you may want to use the Fluent UI theme designer. Now this works a very, very similar way where you can choose a primary color, text color and background color. But after you've selected all of your options, you can export a theme and then within PowerShell, you can then apply that theme to your SharePoint site so that when you go back to your SharePoint sites, you can then apply them no matter what site it is, those themes will always be available. For example, if I go to the settings cog on the top right hand side, once it loads, if I go to change the look, you can see if I go to theme, I have a few different Microsoft themes here of which themes from this site, which are using the site branding feature appear here. And then if I have any tenant wide themes that I want to create using the fluent UI theme designer here, those will appear just above the from this site section.